let's get to it and let's talk about this week's subject. On the Muscle PhD Academy, the topic this week was um, uh, metabolic rate. So what we talked about essentially um, on metabolic rate was uh, a couple of things, four different things. The first thing is what actually causes your metabolic rate, what actually is it? In science, we kind of like to define metabolic rate is essentially how many calories you are utilizing uh, at rest, right? So not during exercise, just at rest. And in general, metabolic rate is gonna account for the majority of calories that you actually utilize um, during an actual 24 hour period, right? Especially for people who are like weightlifting marathon runners, maybe most of what their calorie expenditure is gonna be might be exercise. But for most guys who are lifting an hour a day, even if you're doing some cardio, still the majority, maybe 60% of your calorie expenditure is gonna be metabolic rate. So what explains metabolic rate? A couple of different things. One of those main things is gonna be essentially like uh, your muscle mass and your fat mass. Yes, fat mass does explain metabolic rate, right? So you're talking about, um, on average, your fat mass might be responsible per pound, like maybe two calories per pound of your metabolic rate. Whereas every pound of lean mass is gonna account for something like anywhere from six to 10 calories per pound of lean mass. So obviously the ratio of muscle mass to fat mass is gonna explain um, your metabolic rate. But realize when you diet, if you started off at 200 pounds, and now you actually, for example, went down to 170, even though you might only have two calories, two to three calories per pound of fat mass, you draw uh, 30 pounds of fat, that might impact your metabolic rate. You still have to account for that. Other things that are gonna impact your metabolic rate is gonna be like your hormonal profile, like, um, you know, and, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But particularly things like thyroid hormone, um, it's gonna, if that, that's gonna lower when you diet, that's gonna impact your metabolic rate, right? So you wanna keep things like thyroid hormone up higher, um, you wanna, and you wanna keep muscle mass higher, so you wanna spare muscle mass at all costs when you're dieting down. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, the three different things that we discussed. One was cardio, and two different types of cardio, one was calorie cycle. So, when we talk about cardio, the different types of cardio that you can actually perform is gonna be things like long, um, uh, uh, steady state cardio, and then it's gonna be hit. So one of the studies we showed, you know, they did anywhere from like, you know, 20 to 45 minutes of cardio a day for a couple of weeks, and a lot of people think that's gonna really drastically slow your metabolic rate, but within reason, 20 to 45 minutes of uh, slow steady state cardio, did not lower metabolic rate over a six week period, you know, over several week period of time. Where you get a problem with long steady state cardio is when you move past that 45 minute mark, when, you know, or 20 minute mark to 45 minutes. When you pass it up, you can slow metabolic rate. So like for example, if you're doing an hour of cardio in the morning and an hour of cardio at night, that can slow metabolic rate. Other thing to understand is this, you almost wanna treat steady state cardio as like diet. So if I, if I cause a 500 calorie deficit from diet or a 500 calorie deficit from slow steady state cardio, both would lower my metabolic rate similarly. But cardio in and of itself without a, without a calorie deficit is not gonna drastically lower your metabolic rate, if that makes sense. So treat it like a calorie deficit. If you drop your calories from diet by 500 calories, and another 500 for cardio, that could lower metabolic rate. So you need to treat it like a calorie deficit, but the activity by itself is not lowering the metabolic rate. It's the calorie reduction, or basically the deficit you place yourself in that's causing the uh, decline in metabolic rate. Now, hit cardio, on the other hand, is a whole nother topic. So hit cardio, basically what we're talking about is you are um, doing very high burst, high intensity activities. Generally, when we do like a Wingate bike, for example, you're sprinting all the way out, 100% high intensity, 10 to 30 seconds, all out. And in our laboratory, for example, 
if you fall, if you guys watch Generation Iron, if you're doing cardio, we, we had Ben, for example, when he was prepping for his shows, go all the way out on the bike for 10 to 30 seconds, anywhere from four to 10 all out repetitions. Hit cardio, unlike steady state cardio, actually raises your metabolism and might actually increase the size of your muscles. So hit cardio, the advantage of it is it's short, it's quick, and if you look at a lot of studies, like especially from like the Trappy Brothers um, in our laboratory, you actually lose as much or more fat on HIIT cardio. You don't, mess, you don't actually impair metabolism. So my advice would be this, like if you're starting off and you're dieting and your main goal is not endurance, if you can get all the benefits from HIIT cardio, likely start there. But if you, if you stall and, and HIIT's not giving you any more benefits on top of that, or here's the thing to understand about HIIT. Hits almost like resistance training, and that hit can cause you to overtrain or overreach. If you're resistance training six to seven times a week and you're doing four sessions of hit cardio a week, you might be completely tapped out, where you can't do another hit session because you're so overtrained. In that case, what I would recommend is that's where possibly some steady state cardio, if you're prepping for a contest, can be beneficial. Just realize when you the further you get out, the more at risk you are for possibly you could slow your metabolism. Last topic we talked about was um, calorie cycling, okay? And um, Davuti did this research, but basically what they did was they had you in a calorie deficit, two groups. One group was in a calorie deficit for, um, for four weeks, yes. But basically they would do 11 days calorie deficit and then they would have you uh, calorie up for three days. So out of a two week time period for the four weeks, Six days out of that four weeks, they were eating normal or above normal calories. Now, so, and what they found was that that group lost more body fat and maintained a higher metabolic rate than the group that was restricted the whole time. So take home message on that is, basically you can either have five days of uh, low calorie, two days uh, off where you're more maintenance calories, maybe two to 500 calories above maintenance, or you could go 10 day, 10 to 11 days, calorie restricted, three days, not restricted. You'll maintain your metabolism. So that's scientific research showing that that's the case. So never linearly do anything. You wanna be non-linear. If you're linearly just dropping calories, you're gonna plateau. If you're linearly bulking, you're gonna plateau. Go non-linear. So How does it affect your hormones favorably compared to slow steady state cardio? Okay, so HIIT doesn't cause the calorie deficit that steady state cardio does. So steady state cardio, if it's causing a calorie deficit, it's gonna lower testosterone levels, right? Um, it'll typically, if it's really long, you know, so I think that's the main thing, you know, lower your anabolic hormone status, lower things like IGF-1. HIIT, on the other hand, raises a lot of the anabolic hormones that you would normally do with resistance training. And we see that in our lab, we saw more quad growth and, and actually quad decline when you did steady state cardio. That's a good question. All right, from Facebook? Anything you see? All right, from Facebook, we got Colin Howell asks, what's the best way to recover metabolism after a long period of calorie restriction? Colin, nice question. What's the best way to recover metabolism after a long period of calorie restriction? Okay. There's a couple of different schools of thoughts here. Okay, later in the month we're gonna get more into this, okay? But one of the schools of thoughts are, oh, reverse diet for like six freaking months, right? I'll be honest with you, okay, right? I don't think the data supports that. Like, if you're gonna take several months to reverse, and oh my God, I'm staying lean for longer. Well, yeah, because you're dieting for longer. Research basically demonstrates very clearly the longer I'm in a calorie deficit, the, long, the slower my metabolism gets, okay? You don't wanna do that. What you wanna do is get right back up to maintenance, likely within two weeks. But remember, your new maintenance is not your old maintenance. So if, you, if, if, if your original calories were 3,000 and you, on your diet you went to 1,800, probably your new maintenance calories are gonna likely be something like 2,400 and not 3,000. So we immediately get up to 2,400. If you're near the Applied Science and Performance Institute here in Tampa, Florida, maybe you stop by, I'd like to meet you and shake your hand, and we can do your metabolic rate and tell you exactly where you're at. But stop the deficit 
immediately, stop the bleeding, get backed up to where you are. You're not going to stay shredded year round. Now, I'm not telling you to go binge on Dunkin' Donuts and go out to, you know, um, some of my favorite restaurants like, well, uh, what's what Cheesecake Factory, right? <laughs> Which, if you're keto, that would be okay just to leave out the bread. All right, what do we got? That's the way, guys. And let's see, what you see some energy. What calorie you cycling, should the deficit of wheat be divided on the low calorie days or only? Uh, I'm a little confused with that question. So the calorie cycling. Can you um, say it again in a different way? Yeah, say it, say it again in a different way. If you've got something. You can take one from Facebook if you want. Yeah. If I want to do a high cal day, should it be from fat or carbs? Or is, and is there any different? Great question. So if you want to do a high calorie day, should it be from fat and carbs? What I will tell you is this. It depends on your metabolic state, right? So, um, you know, one is I wouldn't do like super high both. That's likely not the best, me that's Western dieting, not the best metabolic state to be in. There's some evidence that like, if you're, if you're keto, then it's not going to be from carbs, that I can tell you. But if you're not keto and you're carb cycling, um, you know, then possibly there is some evidence that possibly upping your carbs, you know, on, on those higher calorie days, uh, um, and, then, and then going on a depletion day, lowering your carbs could be beneficial. So if you're keto, I would up them likely from uh, fats. If you are not keto and you're kind of endomorphic like I am, and you tend to store fat easier. I would cycle by upping your calories from protein. Dr. Joey Antonio's lab shows it's almost impossible to gain fat from upping protein. So like for example, Andy in our lab has actually um, done similar to Joey Antonio's study and upped his protein pro 300 grams or something a day? 300 to 400. 300 400 grams a day. But the crazy thing about Andy is he's probably, you've probably put on like 15. It's a, it depends on how much. About 15 pounds the last nine months, but he's, it's rock solid. So when you up your calories, you might do it from inefficient calories so you don't store. If you're super lean and you can handle a ton of carbs, probably do it from a balance of carbs and uh, fats and proteins. Great question. Does, uh, question that keeps us getting asked, um, does intermittent fasting have any effect on metabolism? Okay, good question. I mean, here's the thing. It's not, it's actually a really, really, really good question. A calorie deficit can lower metabolism as it is. The thing about intermittent fasting, it seems to, I don't know about the four hour fast, but the more like the eight, nine hour fast where you have some kind of meal frequency, um, intermittent fasting raises ketone levels. So it may be muscle sparing, you know what I mean? So that generally is not gonna lower your metabolism. You know, the calorie deficit's gonna lower your metabolism not intermittent fasting itself. And the ketones will likely spare muscle, so that could be good for metabolism. Um, yeah. So, could it be useful to also cycle through your bulking phase on different days of the week? So maybe five days of a high calories and two days low? Yeah, that's a brilliant question. Absolutely, bulking, you should, de when you bulk, you shouldn't linearly bulk, okay? So I see these linear bulking where like, oh, I start off at 200 carbs in, slowly work my up to 300 and then 405. Listen, here's the thing. When you're bulking, excess calories are gonna shut off things that keep us insulin sensitive, period, period. Basically your, your, cell, your cells have a fuel gauge. If, if the tank is full all the time, you're gonna, your, your muscle's gonna say, I don't need as much mitochondria, which burns fat. You're gonna, you, you know, insulin's gonna be high almost all the time. And that's gonna make you resistant. That's like, again, overfeeding in itself can cause a lot of problems that we see in our society. You need to have some periods of time where you deplete your cells of energy and make them think, oh, I actually need to respond. I need to keep fat metabolism high. I need to keep insulin sensitivity high. So I would do similar to the booty, you know, probably like, you maybe have a high calorie day, moderate calorie day, normal calorie day. Maybe every once in a while even slightly dip under maintenance. 
to stay insulin sensitive. So absolutely, you should cycle your calories even on a bowl. 